So what would happen to financial markets? Things like stocks, real estate, crypto, specifically Bitcoin, if the internet shut down? It's a really great question that I've had since I started investing. So in today's video, I wanna explore the idea of what could hypothetically happen if the internet turned off. And then later in the video, I'm gonna share with you how to financially prepare for that and what could be the real end of Bitcoin. So let's begin. In 1859, a British scientist was looking out into the observable universe through his telescope when he saw a bright white light on the surface of the sun. Now this light lasted for about five minutes before it completely disappeared. And at the time, we didn't really know what it was. Today, we know that that was a solar flare. But fast forward 11 to 13 hours later, and all across the night skies, we saw a bright green light, which today we know as the Aurora Borealis. This was the biggest ever solar storm in recorded human history. And at the time, it shocked telegraph operators around the world. Literally, it set fires to telegraph papers and it shut the entire system down. Now that day became known as the Carrington event thanks to the scientist that observed it, Richard Carrington. But that was 1859 when there was no internet or advanced technology or satellites. So the effects weren't that bad. But what would happen to the modern world today if we got another Carrington class event? Specifically, what would happen to financial markets? Because the last time something like that happened, happened in 2012, but it missed us. But what if the next time it doesn't? Because someday, statistically, it won't. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for the season finale of What If. So this week, Bitcoin is up over 25%. It's climbed over $55,000. It's been going crazy. Meanwhile, Facebook went down. So did Instagram and WhatsApp and pretty much everything else that Facebook owns. And in the small amount of time that it was all down, Mark Zuckerberg lost billions of dollars. And that means we are extremely dependent on technology. And that got me thinking, why did 2019 happen if scientists have been warning us of a global pandemic for years and they were telling us just how unprepared we were and we did nothing to prepare for one? So what if there's something else on the horizon that scientists have been warning us about that we should prepare for, like a supermassive solar flare? Now, I don't wanna scare anyone and tell you that that's what's gonna happen, but even if one did, we would be perfectly fine because the Earth's atmosphere would shield us from all the cosmic radiation hurling through space, so life would be perfectly fine, but our tech would be disrupted. Now, a solar flare is not like the solar flares we think about when we think about solar flares because we confuse them with something called a CME. But what is a CME? Solar flares happen on the surface of the sun when really intense magnetic energy fields get coiled up and tangled. And when that happens, it's that snap of energy that gets released that's sometimes more than a million times more powerful than a volcanic eruption. But it's that release of energy that gets released as X-rays, ultraviolet radiation, and radio waves that we observe as bright white lights on the surface of the sun, which also take us about eight minutes to reach because that's how long it takes for light to reach from the sun to the earth. But sometimes the sun releases something called a CME or a coronal mass ejection. What'd you call me? That's the sun's version of the rip and dip. And that's the one we have to be afraid of because a CME is a huge ejection of supercharged plasma. And it's this geomagnetic storm of supercharged particles traveling at 300 miles per second that creates this temporary disruption of Earth's magnetic field created by these geomagnetic induced currents on the crust of the Earth, which creates that disruption. So. Now that we've got the nerdy science stuff out of the way, let's talk about what would happen to financial markets if one were to hit us today, because it's gonna get crazy. First, we need to sort out our priorities because if a giant CME hit us, then financial markets and Bitcoin would be the least of our concerns. Because if, for example, our power grid gets knocked out, that means it could cause a worldwide blackout. That's not the only thing though, because our satellites way out in outer space would also stop working, which means navigation systems would break. It means our phones wouldn't place phone calls anymore. We wouldn't be able to use social media, which means no more TikTok. It also means our computers might stop functioning, which also means no more Zoom meetings. So hey, this thing might not be so bad after all. 
But unfortunately, it does get worse because airplanes wouldn't be able to take off, which means no more traveling. It also means places that accept credit cards like gas stations and banks would temporarily stop functioning. But arguably the worst is our health because hospitals need electricity to function. And without electricity, we would be sent back to the Shadow Realm. And by Shadow Realm, I just mean we have to use candlelight for a really long time. All of this would have a global compounding effect, which is estimated to cost us $2 trillion to fix. So crypto, Bitcoin, stocks, financial markets in general would really be the least of our concerns, especially because banks and other forms of electronic payment systems would stop working anyway. And if you're someone who has gold or cash laying around, then you'd be king. But most of us would have to switch to bartering where we trade goods with each other like we did before which also means my Pokemon collection will finally have some value. Give you my Charizard for that loaf of bread. It's basically Game of Thrones in real life, but without the dragons. Except Charizards, because that's a dragon. So that's the black swan event that science is warning us about that could destroy Bitcoin. But will it actually? That might surprise you. One of the most indestructible things we have ever created is the internet because there's no single universal or global off switch that someone can just flick and turn everything off because there's no single source where all of the data flows through. Now, one of the most powerful applications of the internet has been the internet of money. And the most famous example, of course, is Bitcoin. And like the internet, Bitcoin was designed with not a single central point of failure in mind. It was designed as a decentralized system. But throughout the years, people have proclaimed it to be dead. There's a website called 99bitcoins, which shows you all of Bitcoin's obituaries or all the times people have said that Bitcoin has died. It's sort of like a time machine to look back at all the crazy things that Bitcoin has survived. That's why it was nicknamed the Honey Badger, or basically indestructible. It's a decentralized system, and as long as there's at least one computer left to mine Bitcoin, technically you can't destroy it. But what if all the computers went down at the exact same time and there was no internet? Bitcoin needs the internet because it relies on miners to run its ledger, which is an online record of every single transaction that has ever taken place. Right now, there's about 11,000 nodes running on the network. Now, a node is just someone who has the entire Bitcoin ledger on their computer. Now, every miner is a node, but not every node is a miner. So the distinction is, as long as there's at least one mining node left, then Bitcoin would technically survive. But the reality would play out a little differently. Because as soon as news of this solar flare spreads around the world, people would run for the exit and Bitcoin's price would plummet. Now, my belief is that there will always be someone left to buy the dip. I know because I'm one of those people because Bitcoin's a religion at this point, but let's assume I'm wrong and there's no one else left to buy a Bitcoin other than the lonely mining node. What happens then? That's never happened before in history other than one other time when Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin. If only one miner is left mining Bitcoin, then really interesting things begin to happen because Bitcoin was designed to adjust its difficulty based on hash rate. And as soon as everyone leaves the network and stops mining, the hash rate falls and the difficulty decreases, which means it's that much easier to mine and get those Bitcoins out from the blocks, which also means that one lonely miner will now have all of the incentive in the world to continue mining, making bank, and keeping Bitcoin alive. And most likely, they're not gonna double spend their coins because they wouldn't rob from themselves because they're the only ones on the network anyway, and they would continue operating under the assumption that someday their coins would be a lot more valuable than they are today. But that's no fun. So let's continue to assume the worst and let's assume that this coronal mass ejection takes out every single source of electricity permanently. The internet, radio, which means that one time people figured out how to send Bitcoin to each other over the radio wouldn't count. Satellites, everything in its path would be eliminated. In that worst case scenario, the first thing that would happen is we'd get a Nicolas Cage sequel with uh, one man. But for the financial markets all across the world, trading would stop. And here's exactly why. In 1858, two steam-powered battleships met in the middle of the ocean to connect over two and a half thousand miles of cable. That was to connect the North American and European continents together so that we could finally start texting each other. 
Now, it was to send a telegraph, and that first message took over 17 hours to arrive. But today, we have over 380 of these cables underneath the ocean, spanning over 745,000 miles long. Now, even though these fiber optic cables are not really affected by geomagnetically induced currents, because they're so long, we had to install repeaters along certain intervals to amplify their signals. And those repeaters are susceptible to failure, which means if they fail, an entire fiber optic cable that connects two continents could disconnect them. Now, if that happens, then yes, everything would fail permanently and we would never be able to buy, sell, or trade cryptocurrency, and that would be the end of that. But interestingly, things like real estate and stocks would still survive because we'd just go back to the old method of doing it and keeping a physical record. It works the same way, but just a lot slower. Now, the odds of this happening are very small. According to the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, short for PNAS, they say that the odds of a Carrington event happening again is about once every 150 years. Now, the last time a Carrington class event happened was in 2012, so it was actually very recent, but that one missed us by nine days. So if we get another event like that to happen again, it just so happens that there is something we can do to protect our coins from total loss, and here's what you gotta do. Send all your coins to a cold storage device like this, because even if this device would be destroyed, technically you could still recover all your coins in theory, because keeping your coins on the blockchain itself is like the equivalent of taking a snapshot of what everyone has before the event happens. Almost like saving your game right before someone unplugs it. Oh, you beat Omega Weapon, huh? You saved your game, right? Right? Putting it on a cold storage device allows us to preserve our coins on the blockchain itself, which means eventually, when the internet does recover and come back online, we would be able to access them. Otherwise, keeping your coins in a brokerage, on an exchange, or anywhere online means that you're taking a risk and trusting the company to do their due diligence to protect our coins. And even though we have sophisticated backup techniques and ways of doing that, still, if the solar flare is powerful enough, it could, in theory, fry up all the backups and the servers and who knows what could happen. So if that's not a risk you wanna take, that's what I would personally do. Otherwise, overall, the chance of this happening is extremely small because this flare would have to be powerful enough to knock out the entire power grid all at once, all around the world at the exact same time probably would never happen. But even if it did, we would still recover even if it takes us months or even years. And when we do recover, so will everything else, including my annoying YouTube videos begging you to smash the like button and subscribe. In the meantime, don't forget to have a great rest of your day. Smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. If you still haven't, go get those two free stonks with Weeble. Go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.